want to save money. Duh, who doesn't? I'm a true believer in one way above all others. Let's start with the one true thing before reverting to other tried and true pieces of savings advice. Automation. I believe in this above all other saving methods. Automate regular contributions of a set amount on set days into a savings account. You set up this automated plan with your bank or credit union once, and then you let it run in the background of your life for the rest of your life. Every week or every other week on payday or every month or whatever, knock yourself out, set it on daily, go crazy. The point is you automate a transfer from your checking account into a somewhat harder to access savings account. The key is to make today's decision to save happen automatically in the future. Electronic, programmed, unchanging, savings by robot. And that way, you don't have to make the decision more than once. We're not strong enough for that. But automation doesn't depend on us being strong, which is exactly why it works. My bank takes a small amount of money every few days out of my checking account automatically and puts it into my savings account. I've also successfully used the savings app Capital for this automating function. This is by far the best new school way to save money. And if you're not doing it, then I don't know what to tell you except this. In a really deep Arnold Schwarzenegger voice, do it. After automation, tips two through seven could also help. Number two would be goal setting. So first, you set a specific dollar amount. Then you name it, you write it down, you make it real. And the idea here is that when you name your goal, three fabulous new outfits to rock the house, or dream trip to Dollywood, Tennessee, or BMX racer, or whatever you're actually saving for, you change the feeling of savings from that gray, gnawing emptiness in your belly into something tangible, exciting, colorful, and worthwhile. Going without today is a necessary step toward having something awesome tomorrow, and goal setting can help do that. Number three is roundups. The old school way was to drop that pesky pocket change of coins and small bills collected throughout your day into a change jar for a year or so, and then bring that all down to your bank or the grocery store that had those automated machines. But the new school way is to use roundups, which are essentially the less than a dollar change that you get from making purchases via debit and credit cards, and then electronically tracking all that electronic loose change. When it reaches five bucks, you automate that into a savings account. Many banks can do this automated roundup thing for you, as will many savings apps like Capital or Acorn. Does it work? Yeah, it works. Mostly because of the number one rule, automation. The fourth tip is to identify the teeny tiny leak in your budget. Maybe you can't save, and you don't really know why. The answer is maybe in the small stuff. The dreaded answer, if you've ever read those other finance blogs aimed at millennials, is your latte or your avocado toast. And I know you're sick and tired of hearing that cliche. So you hope I won't mention the words latte or avocado toast anymore. And look. The big idea here is not to forbid you from having those things or some other small luxury item you crave. The big idea is to find out, maybe just for informational purposes, what you're spending money on. So try for a week. You write down every single purchase you make. Tic Tacs, iTunes, Hulu subscription, everything. Afterwards, did you find the leak? I'm not saying you can't have those things, but rather, it's worth maybe knowing where the leak is coming from, right? Well, maybe. But my number five tip is actually, it's the big stuff. See, the worst thing about the avocado toast and latte lecture to millennials is not that it's a cliche, although the cliche is admittedly bad, but it's not even the heart of the matter. The matter being your struggle to save money. The true fact is that most of your money is going to housing and transportation every month. 
it's not lattes, and it's not avocado toast. And housing and transportation, it seems pretty immovable, but also it's the correct answer to the savings puzzle, the mathematical answer. It's your house payment and your car payment. Do you really, really, really want to save money but can't? Big changes in savings won't happen without making difficult choices about your house or car payment. I'm sorry, I didn't invent math. I'm just reminding you of it. Sixth tip, only carry cash. You take out a certain amount of money. You buy stuff with that limited amount of cash. You don't use plastic. When you run out of cash, you don't buy anymore because no more money. Your grandparents actually did this. They saved money this way. This is all very decidedly old school and it's a bit extreme, but try it. Maybe it will work for you. A variation on creating an all cash world is called the envelope trick. Some people swear by this one. It's similar to the only carry cash tip, but a bit more organized. Here's what you do. You label a bunch of physical paper envelopes with your specific monthly budget. Things like rent, utilities, groceries, entertainment, and gas money. On payday or the beginning of the month, you withdraw a set cash amount and you put that amount in each envelope. When the money runs out this month, no more spending on that category until the next payday. No plastic, no cheating, and again, it's extreme, but this has worked for millions of people and it might work for you. My seventh tip is about bargaining and haggling. You know what else grandma did? She haggled everywhere with her limited wad of cash with all the shopkeepers, like every day. You can offer less than the store wants at pretty much any place that isn't a complete chain store. All furniture stores, for example, any service provider, all locally owned businesses. Pretty much every business owner has a bit of flexibility in their prices, if you ask. Does that seem uncomfortable? Would you be embarrassed to do this? Put it this way. Would you make yourself momentarily uncomfortable by sticking your arm under the driver's seat of your car to retrieve a $20 bill? I would. Well, haggling at the store is more like sticking your arm in an uncomfortable position with hundreds of dollars within grasp and thousands of dollars at stake per year. Try a little discomfort. Your grandma actually enjoyed it. You might also. But can I remind you of the one best way? Are you ready? Automate your savings. Do it. Thank you, Arnold. Visit us and learn more at klrn.org slash it just makes sense.